Hello students. Now we are discussing after micro simple microscope. Now just we are discussing compound microscope. Simple microscope can magnify 20 times image that of the object. That means object if it is of 1 centimeter near about 20 centimeters image is going to get formed due to simple microscope. But when object is minute one for example blood cells, plant or animal cells, bacteria, simple microscope is not working here for that one we are using compound microscope. How is a compound microscope? In examination maybe there is a, there will be question explain the structure and working of compound microscope. Now we are starting this one. See compound microscope is nothing but a combination of two lenses or two convex lenses. This one is the first lens. We are going to keep the object near to this lens or the object which is towards the or the lens which is towards the object is called as objective lens. How is objective lens? Objective lens having the smaller cross section. See, this much cross section is there. But as compared to this, see here, cross section is little more or bigger cross section it having. Now, as the cross section is less, curvature increases. As curvature increases, focal length decreases. So, how is the objective lens? Objective lens is of smaller curvature and smaller focal length. Second, this is the eyepiece or the lens which is towards the eye or the lens we are using to view through this lens, that lens is called as eyepiece. How is eyepiece? Eyepiece curvature bigger. It having the bigger curvature. That means curve is little. As bigger curvature focal length increases. So these are the two lenses but what is common within this one? Both the lenses having the principal axis in same line. Are they having the common focal length? How this lenses are working? See, this one is object AB which is kept beyond F1. F1 is focal length. Some conditions are required which is the first condition object should be placed beyond F1 that is focus of objective lens. It should not be in between object, optical center and focus. The first ray will travel as a parallel to principal axis and after traveling it will pass through the focus and the second ray which is moving directly from optical center going to meet here. So where is this meeting? Beyond 2F1. As it is beyond 2F1, we are getting real magnified and the inverted images. Then with the help of objective lens, near about 5 to 100 times we can increase the image. So this is the first condition. Here we are getting the image of this object. Suppose it is A, B. So this one I will call it as a A1. B1. Why? Because it is the image. And now the image of the objective lens is used as a object for IBs. Now for this lens, this one is image. But for IBs, it is a object. Need not to necessary or only originally object. Maybe the image can be used as a object. Now, what is the specific condition C? This one is a optical center and this eyepiece focus is here. So, focus of eyepiece that is E. That means, image of this lens should form in between optical center and focus of eyepiece. It is fitted in parallel so we can adjust it properly. Now, this image is working as an object. One ray which is parallel passing through the focus and reaching the eye and one ray traveling directly through the principal focus optical center without any deviation. 
But here they are not going to meet. But if you extend these rays like this one, definitely they are going to meet at one point here. And here we are getting here image. So how we are getting this image? That is like this one, perpendicular, downward, A, A1, so it is A2, B, B1, so here we are getting B2. So how image we have got? First image to 5 to 100 times magnified image we are getting. This image is used as an object for eyepiece which is in between optical center and focus of an eyepiece. Then they are getting as a rule of refraction, reflection, a refraction here magnified, highly magnified, virtual and inverted. See, here object is downward, so here it is downward, so it is considered as a erect image. So, with the help of eyepiece, 10 times we can magnify the image. Actually, see, first part is magnifying 5 to 100 times and 10 times of that. That means if image is of 1 cm, near about 5 cm to 100 cm can be magnified. And 10 times of that means if 1 cm to 5 cm, then 5 cm to 10 times of 5 cm, that is 50 cm larger image we are getting. So highly magnified images we are getting with the help of compound microscope. So what is compound microscope? Compound microscope is a combination of two convex lenses which having the same principal axis or principal axis in the same line within which eyepiece lens that is oh, sorry objective lens having the smaller cross section and smaller focal length. Eyepiece having the bigger cross section and bigger focal length. Object's image is maintained within the object optical center and focal length of eyepiece and then with the help of eyepiece we are getting here highly magnified images. Next to this, third use of convex lenses that are used in telescope. What is telescope? Telescope is an instrument by which we can see the distant object in their magnified form. But if the telescope is used to observe the distant object that is astronomical objects like a star and the planets, then such kind of telescopes are called as astronomical telescopes. Telescopes are of two types. One is reflecting telescope and second is refracting telescope. Within the reflecting telescopes, we are using mirrors. That is the convex, concave and convex mirror. That is the ninth standard we have discussed. That is not a part here because they are using the mirror. But the telescopes, reflecting, tele, refracting telescopes, which are using the lenses, that part we are discussing in the tenth standard. See how they are working. As a compound microscope, it is a combination of two different convex lenses which are fitted in tube or metallic tube in which the distance in between these two lenses we can adjust by using this metallic tube. We can take one lens little forward or backward from the other. Within these two lenses, one is objective lens which is towards object and one is eyepiece which is towards our eye. It is exactly opposite to the micro microscope or compound microscope. Here, Objective lens having bigger curvature, that means it having the more focal length, but eyepiece having smaller curvature, that means it having the smaller focal length. But what is same within that? Both the lenses having their same principal axis or their principal axis are in the same line. See how images are get obtained with the help of the telescope. We are observing the object which is distant from us. That means all the planets, stars which are far away from us, the object which is far away from us, line, lines coming or incident rays which are coming from that object are always parallel. The first we are considering, this is the first ray which is incident one. 
coming from the source and passing through optical center. That means without any deviation it will pass. And two more is we are considering as example only which are parallel to this incident ray. Then all the rays which are parallel after refraction. Why it is called as refracting telescope? Because here refraction of light is there. They will definitely meet at one point and here we are getting the focus. So we are getting image here. Very tiny or small image we are getting. See, the planets and star is giant one. But they are at the far distance or they are distant. We are getting the smaller image. Now, objects image. Image is forming exactly at focus. So the distance between this image and the optical center is a focal length of objective lens. And now what is here? This image is used as a object for this eyepiece. But here see, one important fact is that both the focuses, both lenses having the same focus. That means this is the focus of objective lens as well as eyepiece. So the image which is created by this object which is far away from us is exactly at focus of objective lens that is focal length and here for this eyepiece now this image is working as a object which is placed exactly the focus of this eyepiece. So the first ray will travel parallel to principal axis and it will pass through the focus and the second from the optical center without any deviation it will pass. But see they are not combining to each other but when you are extending that one that means what? See here is also they are parallel. So we are observing that lens is from here. That means the rays which are incident rays which are parallel gives the image at focus and this image is used as an object for this eyepiece which is also at the focus and the rays are par travel to parallel they will meet at infinity that means from infinity to finally we are reaching to the infinity so the objects which are giant one we can observe that as it is though they are at the distant region and that is the working of eyepiece and the object lens combined it is working of telescope use of convex lens in simple microscope then second point compound microscope then telescope and now the fourth is optical instrument while discussing the ray diagram actually how it will work I have explained in simple words we are using that one now in optical instruments such as a camera, then projector, then the spectro spectrograph. Within this one, we are using this optical instrument. We are using convex lenses. And the last is fifth one. We are using that one in spectacles. Convex lenses are used in spectacles for correcting the farsightedness. Within this one, within this defect, the bending power decreases and because of bending power decreased bending power image is forming behind the retina and to correct this defect we are using this convex lens to get the focused image at a retina so only five uses are there of con convex lenses simple microscope compound microscope telescope, optical instrument and spectacles. Okay. See, we are discussing now persistence of a vision. Means what? See, vision means what? Ability to see is called as a vision. But within the vision, what is the actual process when light reflected from the object enters our eye and fall on retina, we are getting the real inverted image from that one 
as retina is important part or important screen working to get the images but as soon as the object is removed from our eye we are not able to see that object why because as much time we having the rays that much time only we are getting the that persistence of that object but see within that one one point is that when image is removed from the object that is vision imprinted on the image is imprinted on our retina for 1/16th time of a one second after the image is get removed suppose you are observing towards the sun and after closing the sun after closing your eyes sun is not in front of you but you are observing little bright spot on the retina after that it will disappear so one example for that one you have to take a circular card and on that card on the first face you have to draw a diagram of case and behind this you have to draw draw the diagram of any bird or anything monkey whatever it may be you will like and you have to rotate it and after rotating if you give a jerk it will start to rotate and within the rotation when the case is in front of you you will get the case but after getting this face removed the persistence of that image is imprinted on your retina for 1/16 time of 1 second and here both the objects is now because it is imprinted on the retina and this object which is behind it comes in front of you so you will observe both the objects at the same time and you will find the bird which is behind the card will be appear within the case so why it happens because of persistence of a vision but actually how to define the persistence image is or image on the retina imprinted for the 1/16th time of 1 second after object is get removed and this sensation on retina persist for a while this is called as a persistence of a vision this one is eye lens or eye wall and this behind this lens we having retina where we are getting the actual images this retina is nothing but the light sensitive cells this light sensitive cells are of two types one are rod like cells and second are cone like cell very informative point we are discussing this one are rod like cells are responsible for to get the knowledge of are they sensitive for intensity of light that means dim light or bright light it can get easily but the cone like cells are sensitive for colors so what is the difference in between that one rod like cells or rod cells can respond in the faint light and so at evening also or in the early in the morning we are getting little little images or we are getting little image of each and every object but we can't get the color of that object why because cone like cells will not respond in the faint light and so in the shops or the jewelry shops or in the market have you seen in the cloth market the full intensity light is present why because in the full light or bright light our eye can get the color so this cone like cells cells are not responding well in the faint light they are responding only in the bright light and again this cone shaped cells response is different for different color and within that one this cone shaped cells are more enthusiastic for the red color so we can spot the red color easily in between all the colors so within that video also i have explained the red light travel for a long distance without more deviation and the human cells or the cells which exist within the eye are very enthusiastic or more sensitive 
for the red color so danger should be used of red color only because we can spot from the long distance and our cells are very enthusiastic or more sensitive for the red color sometimes what will happen within this some conical cells are less present or less in number within that such a case the person is not able to judge the color properly because it is lacking of less conical cells or lack of cells cells and so such a person is called as or termed as a color blind so this is the total eye eye wall within that one retina retina made up of two kind of cells rod like cells and cone like cells rod like cells are responsible or they are light intensity cells sensitive for this and color sensitive cells are cone shaped cells rod cells can respond in the faint light as well as bright light but cone like cells are not responding in the faint light but they are responding only in the bright light the response to the different color is different they are responding more for the red color and the light and color together they are sending the messages to the brain and brain is perceiving the object as it is we are using response is different for different colors so we are using the indicators or the dangers are of red color thank you